jazz lovers, we're here today to talk about the great Roy Haynes. We're at West 3rd Street McDougal, at a club that used to be called Visiones. That's when I first saw Roy Haynes in 1987. I was stunned, ladies and gentlemen. It was stunning what I saw that night and heard. I grew up in South Valley, Massachusetts, listening to Sonny Payne, Count Basie, Buddy Rich, Art Blakey, Max Roach, and then later on in high school, Tony Williams, I started getting into him. 1986, I went to William Patterson College where I met my great friend, Bill Stewart. And he hit me to this record. It changed my life. To the point where I timed my life as BR and AR. Life before Roy, life after Roy. Ladies and gentlemen, that night, 1987, his right hand was loose as a goose, just playing down, just playing quarter notes on the cymbal. Left foot propped up against the hi-hat. Right bass drum foot pedal, tap dancing on it, playing rhythms I'd never heard before, which I know now coming straight from Charlie Parker, Bud Powell. They play tunes that at the end of the choruses, there'd be like a hook, a rhythm in the tune. And you couldn't wait to get to that point to see what Roy was going to do. And once you got there, he'd do something different, more dynamic. Each chorus, the momentum was incredible. Where people were screaming. I want to thank the great Roy Haynes for that night in 1987. And I want to thank the great Bill Stewart for showing me Roy Haynes. And now I'd like to introduce you to Bill Stewart. Joe and hello to your viewers. Hope everyone is staying well in this time of the coronavirus and uh, my friend the great drummer Joe Farnsworth is doing some tribute videos and he's doing one for our hero Roy Haynes, the incredible Roy Haynes who is 95 years old now and uh, I just contributed a very short uh, drum solo video but it's based on the opening of the track Snap Crackle from Roy's record Out of the Afternoon. Just using that as a springboard to uh, play a little stuff. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy and uh, happy 95 to Roy and everyone stay safe and well. Thank you. Thank you, Bill Stewart. Ladies and gentlemen, that night in 87 was Dave Bukowski, Craig Handy, and Ed Howard in that group. One of the greatest groups I ever saw in my life. In particular, Dave Bukowski, the way he played with Roy Haynes, like we talked about with Walter Davis and A.T. Those two played together like I'd never heard before. It was like a game within the game. The way they phrased together and landed together. It was, well, once again, it was stunning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce Dave Bukowski. I'm very happy to be here to talk about the legendary Roy Haynes. I've been playing with him since 1986, even before I ever worked with him. He was always one of my musical heroes, playing on all my favorite records. His drumming has buoyancy. It's very elastic. The way he breaks up the beat was and is so ahead of its time, ever since the 1940s, and he is still growing. This is my first record with Roy Haynes, live in Paris, on my first tour. We had a good time. I've learned so much from him about music and life. He's like my second father. He taught me how to play the melody strong and always swinging. 
and to be creative. One of the sayings he used to say before the show was, relax, crisp, clean, and in the pocket. And that's the way he always plays. I would stare at him to make sure I was locked in with him rhythmically because he puts accents in places no one else ever thinks of doing. And you have to be ready for anything because he could leave you in the dust. And when you react, it has to be rhythmically precise and clear. Comping always has to have space in it because he'd say, I will do the decorating. We played recently at the Blue Note during Thanksgiving and he played as hip as ever at the age of 95. He's the greatest and I love him. I'd like to play for you a song we played many, many times throughout the years by Thelonious Monk called Trinkle Tinkle. <laughs> Seventh Avenue and Bleecker. And I'd stand outside here and watch the great Art Blakey, McCoy Tyner, the Jazz Ted. So many people. You see the wall with Billy Higgins? This is the place of my very first big time job in New York City with the great Benny Golson. My great great friend Dwayne Bernal got me on that gig. And I stayed with Benny for 10 years. My first week, I played there. Everyone came down. George Coleman, Harold Mayburn, Jimmy Heath. 
Walter Davis, Ray Bryant, Benny Collins. But once again, it was Sunday night, resistance night, last set. Roy Haynes came and sat at the bar. He wore these belts that cost like, it looked like $10,000. Beautiful cowboy hat, his glasses came in, beautiful jacket. He sat at the bar. The first tune, Benny says, oh man, we're gonna play uh, Stable Mates. The way Benny played Stable Mates, he played a melody, piano solo, and then me and Benny played duets. He says, and Joel, play everything you know. I said, oh man, I said, what am I gonna do in front of Roy Haynes? This is a, this is a first for me. Everyone always remembers their first, like first time you play in front of Max Roach. First time you play in front of Billy Higgins. This is the first time I played in front of Roy Haynes. And so we played the whole set, and I don't remember saying too much to Roy afterwards. But the next day, it's Monday, Benny Golston called me up. He says, Joe, Benny Golston, I just want to tell you you did a great job. He said, a lot of guys came down, their drummers were saying, hey man, why you got that guy up there, man? Hire me. Five or six guys said that that, that week. And as he's telling me the story, my heart was kind of dropping, like, oh, man. This is a big old Roy Haynes said, when you got up to the set and sat down on the drums, your foot and hand hit the cymbal at the same time before you even uh, started playing. And he said he knew then that you were going to be a bad mother he says, great job, Joe. Roy Haynes is in your corner. And that's a hell of a guy to have in your corner. And I, I just couldn't believe it. Right here, Benny Golson, Roy Haynes, Stable Mates, 1994. Thank you, Dwayne Burrow. I love you. Welcome to the Village Vanguard. One week after Sweet Basil, I, when I was playing with Benny Golson, Roy Haynes showed up. I subbed for Kenny Washington here with the great Johnny Griffin. Second set we're about to play, and when you're playing the drums with the Vanguard, you can see the people walking down the stairs. And who comes down again? Roy Haynes. So we played, everything was great, best I could do. But I went over to him afterwards, he was sitting next to the, uh, the door. I said, Mr. Haynes, I'm so sorry you came out twice this week. And both times I was playing drums, he said, oh man, I enjoyed it. He said, man, always, you know, swing hard, but he told me, play what you mean and mean what you play. That's all we said about that night. It was stuck with me forever. I used to see him down there all the time with this group with Kikowski and Craig Handy and Ed Howard. And a lot of times he'd pick up his hi-hat and go out in the front of the stage. He was like in a boxing match with this, with this hi-hat, eye to eye playing these rhythms that you never heard before out of a hi-hat. It was so exciting. It was like dancing, man. It was like a tangle. Smoke Jazz Talk, 106 and Broadway, Duke Ellington Boulevard. This is the home of our many drum battles, Kenny Washington and myself. Last year, on Saturday night, second set, round seven, Paul Stash said, you better bring your A game. Roy Haynes is in the front row with his daughter. Couldn't believe it. So we saw Roy. He was so happy to be there. He wanted to hear two drums going at it. One of my favorite records of all time. Art Blakey, Drums Around the World. Moose to Moose. Art Blakey, Philly Joe Jones, Roy Haynes. Check that bad boy out. Anyways, so we opened up with evidence. Thinking Roy did that with uh, Florida Smoke and Johnny Griffin. I was playing, I had flashbacks those days at the Vanguard and Sweet Basil, 20 years before. But this time, I used it as an inspiration, not to play it safe like I was playing it, man, to use what he was talking about. You know, come from the left, come from the right, you know, get into that big room we talked about. You know, mean what you say, say what you mean. And as we were playing the melody, you could see Roy, that, 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 that. Da, da. He was dancing in between the cracks. <laughs>
is about the Haynes family. This is about royalty. This is about Roy Haynes and his grandson, Marcus. But um, I think particularly it's the story of the symbol that Roy gave me back in 1968 or so when I was working with the Stan Getz Quartet when I first met Roy. And uh, that symbol, or this symbol, I should say, I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, we're continuing now. That's the symbol. And, uh... and as you can see uh, here, see, get a shot of that. See, in 1998, a long time later, Roy signed the symbol for me. This is the symbol that was uh, on the first Return to Forever album. Um, well, first of all, it was a symbol that was on Now He Sings, Now He Sobs. And that's when we were playing with, uh, uh, Roy and I were in, uh, Stan Getz's band, along with, uh, along with Steve Swallow, who, who got me the gig in the first place. And I like that symbol so much. I like the symbol so much. It worked so well with him that after he gave it to me, I encouraged the drummers that worked with me to uh, use it. So I had to use this on the first Return to Forever album uh, and on Light as a Feather as well. Um, Barry also used this when we played with Circle, with Dave Holland and Anthony Braxton. And um, then uh, Jeff Ballard used this when we played, we had the trio with... Uh, Abishai Cohen and Jeff. And I'm not sure whether Marcus played this. Marcus Gilmore is Roy Haynes' grandson. And, uh, but, uh, but Marcus had some of his own symbols made. This is one of them. It's a different style. It's a little bigger, darker sound. I like it too. And then, and then, um, Marcus signed it for me. I had him sign it, right? The grandson of Roy Haynes. That was in, uh, 2015. Right. So, so there's a little, uh, royalty history here with these symbols. And then there's one more part to it. One more part to it. Which is this fellow. How similar this sounds to this? This one's a little brighter. Uh, Dave Weckel uh, mentioned to me that Sabian Symbols might be interested in uh, in producing a symbol similar to this old pasty symbol. So they took Roy Hill's symbol. The original Rohan symbol, and they they had it for a while, and they they inspected it, and they cloned it, and came up with this model. And I think uh, I think it's going to be called Royalty. This symbol is going to be called Royalty. It's going to be a Chick Corea special uh, signature series Royalty symbol. I hope it happens. And uh, Roy's uh, Roy's legacy carries on. He's one of the greatest musicians that the music world knows. And as a drummer, my God, uh, he set a kind of a standard. There's no one quite like Roy. Uh, I have the honor of have, having uh, recorded and played with Roy on many different occasions. And uh, the symbol kind of says it all. I think Roy likes gongs too. Sadulia <laughs> Bob, 
bambi bambi ba so we will be the ya bam we will be the ya bambi bambi ya say a day a day day a day bambi bambi shaba bambi one of the greatest evenings i had in my life it was one night Saturday night walking through the West Village. Not sure what I was going to do. I passed by the Blue Note. There's Roy Haynes. Gift from God. So I walk in there. He played great, man. And I waited at the bar for him. And he came over and we must have talked for four hours. Cognacs. And jazz lovers, what did we talk about? Sarah Vaughn. Roy Haynes. Art of Brushes, Lester Young, Charlie Parker, but he, but he really wanted to talk about Sarah Vaughn, how much he loved playing behind her, how much he loved lyrics and loved songs, the great American songbook, and how much he loved putting those accents in between the melodies and her singing. That night we're sitting at the bar and he showed me things with his hands he was tap dancing with his hands. I never understood this before. The role between drummers and tap dancing. And how he himself is a great tap dancer. And he was like saying how they're very smooth with their feet. And he wanted to be smooth with the brushes. Right, left, right, right, left. Left, right, left, left, right. And then he got off his stool and demonstrated with his feet. And he was cooking. He was dancing so great. I was stunned. He says, hey, Fonda, can you dance? I said, oh, man, I got big, fat, heavy feet like Herman Munster. I can't dance. No, oh, come on, Fonda. So he got me down. And I was trying to tap. And he was, it was Roy Haynes, man. Imagine that. Two in the morning, blue note, tap dancing with Roy Haynes. <laughs> you should see my feet are like 90 pounds each. He says, hey, boy, you got to lighten up with them feet, man. And that's why I first heard, I'm Roy Haynes, light and right. He told me a story about... Blues and the Abstract Truth, Oliver Nelson. Stolen moments, he's playing all brushes. He said some of the cast were nodding off as the take was going on. And at the beginning of the solo, he let out a downbeat with the right hand, bam! He said everyone woke up, shook. And uh, after, this, after the take, Paul Chambers came over and said, Roy Haynes, that's the baddest stuff I ever heard in my life. It was that, yeah, yeah, man. I laid that downbeat on him. You go back and listen to that and you'll hear what we're talking about. Some of the stuff that Roy Haynes was telling me about the brushes that night at Blue Note Jazz Club. This is a tune, Yes Sir, That's My Baby. Edda Jones, Roy Haynes, off a record called Don't Go to Strangers. Eight bar brush intro. brushes that sounds like a tap dancer and then when you start doing it then you start trying to move like a dancer would move right 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 right
you, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm going to use some sticks. Michael Farnsworth, may I have some sticks, please? Yes. Thank you, son. Jazz lovers to the Savoy Ballroom between 140th and 141st Street, Lenox Avenue, 596. Opened up in 1926 to 1958. This is really the home of Chick Webb, the king of the drums. This is where Benny Goodman's band came and had a battle of the bands with Chick Webb, and Chick Webb took care of some natural business. The likes of Ella Fitzgerald. Lindy Hopper's dancing, and the great Frankie Manning. Look him up on YouTube. This is where Roy Haynes left Boston in 1945 to play with Lewis Russell, who I don't know really hardly anything about, but left Lewis Russell and joined Lester Young right here at the Savoy in 1946 to play with him for two years. Roy Haynes and Lester Young. The Lindy Hoppers, Frankie Manning, 1945, the Savoy Original five spot. Punk, Johnny Griffin, Abdul Malik, Roy Haynes. One of the greatest jazz records in the world. So I had to come down here and pay tribute to Roy's playing on that date. Especially Epistrophe. I remember talking to Johnny Griffin about him first playing on that record, and Griff said, Yeah, I thought Roy was playing too much. And, and so I went up to Roy and said, Hey, Roy, man, you're doing too much. And Roy got really mad at him. He said, hey, man, Lester Young didn't have a problem with me. Charlie Parker didn't have a problem with me. John Coltrane didn't have a problem with me. Sarah Vaughton didn't have a problem with me. What's your problem, man? And after that, just kind of shut uh, Griff up. And then Griff learned that week 
how to hear what Roy was playing and loved him ever since. I'm Craig Holiday Haynes. It's weird, I used to live in Vegas 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. And uh, my father came to play at the Blue Note that was here for a while with Chick Corea and Miroslav Vitos, Super Trio. And um, I picked him up at the hotel. I was driving him around and he started complaining. I'm like, well, why? What, what? He said, I hate this place. I, this is all phony. I used to play here in the 40s and the 50s. This was all desert, talking about the Strip, what is now called the Strip. It was all desert because the Strip was up in the north, what they call downtown now. Anyway, he played the concert. He finished the tour. And he called me about a month later and said, I'm coming to Vegas. I'm like, why are you coming here? You, you hate it here. <laughs> so, so he had all that money. He didn't want to put it in the bank after 9-11, so he bought the house. Anyway, the house had a little flood, so it's so being renovated. It's gonna be all like new inside again. But uh, meanwhile, uh, let's see. I want to play a record for you. This record here, it's called Jazz Abroad. Jazz Abroad featuring Roy Haynes and Quincy Jones. You see that? Recorded in uh, 1954. And uh, some of you may know my father's, one of his nicknames is Hagnus. The other nickname, popular nickname is Snap Crackle. Not Snap Crackle Pop, but Snap Crackle for his sound. And uh, Hagnus came about because there was a, now there are different stories. Supposedly in the hotel where the band had been staying for a good while, the maid came over and he wasn't there in his room. And she asked one of the other band members, oh, does Mr. Hagnus want his room cleaned? She didn't know the name is Haynes. And she said Hagnus. So that name stuck with him. They used to call him Hagnus. Some people call me Little Hagnus. Anyway, so check this record out. This record here from this Jazz Abroad in 1954. This is Hagnus. Hold it. It's coming up. Okay, here it comes. Here comes Agnes. Have a seat here. Have a seat in this dusty seat here. You can listen to Agnes. I got this little, this little box I got here. It's a cute little box, right?
can still find it someplace. This is a vinyl, but uh, take the forest. Two. One. You can trade ones because it's only a duo. Oh, actually, there's a bass in the background. You can't hear it. Okay, so I gotta thank Joseph Farnsworth for asking me to do this because I would probably still be open back in the hotel, but uh, I got a lot of work to do right here in the house before these contractors come back. So. Yeah, so peanuts, so peanuts. <laughs> So you're probably wondering who's playing saxophone, right? I believe that's Shahid Sahab. I don't have my glasses on. I'm pretty sure that's Shahid Sahab and uh, I think Joe Benjamin on bass. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. So just find the record. You can look it up. All right. That's just a, no, we're not there yet. Almost. There we go. Okay, peace y'all. Stay safe. Stay home. Thank you, Roy Haynes. It's been a most humbling experience doing this video about you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for all the swing you put in my life and other people's around the world. From Lester Young to Charlie Parker. Bud Powell, Johnny Griffin, Thelonious Monk, Chick Korea, McCoy Tyner, John Coltrane, and uh, just a host of others. You've meant the world to me. I'm so glad that you chose the drums to play and it made me want to become a drummer. And I'm just so glad that you passed it on to guys like me. I'd like to thank Bill Stewart, Dave Kakowski, Chick Korea and Craig Holiday Haynes. Roy, from the bottom of my heart, I love you. And I owe you everything that I do on the drums. And most drummers do, whether they know it or not. Light and right, mean what you play, play what you mean. And always swing hard. Roy, thank you, thank you. <laughs>